by the hoary hosts of Hoggoth, Dave Gibbons, critically acclaimed artist behind Watchmen and Vader's Quest, once worked on an issue of Doctor Strange. Well, not an actual issue, this is from one of my favorite Marvel series, Marvel Fanfare, which features various stories told by various writers and artists each issue. Oh, and did I tell you that Walt Simonson wrote this? But before I get started, here's some plugs. Over on my Patreon, I've finished uploading all pages of the 40-page comic anthology, Destructo Boy, and other exciting tales. And I am almost nearing completion of the first issue of Destructo Boy, Era of Alpha Cardinal, Part 1. Uh, it's about 25 pages, and I will hopefully be getting it uh, <laughs> on sale sometime in the coming months. And back on Patreon, I'm still in the process of uploading the pages to A Dead Fish in the Grass, a 166-page horror graphic novel set in the Old West. If you're still interested in buying the original printing of the Destructo Boy and Other Exciting Tales book, there are still a few copies for sale at $19.99 plus shipping, so check out the link tree in the description. Um, not going to be reprinted, I don't plan on doing that. I'm going straight to the Destructo Boy sequel issues, of which there will be six eventually. I might do that as a monthly or bi-monthly thing, I'm not sure yet. Also on my Patreon, you can vote each month from one of three video topics. And this comic was voted for by the Patreons. Released in 1988, written by Walt Simonson with art by Dave Gibbons, this is Marvel Fanfare 41, Perchance to Dream. The book begins as a storm rages in New York with some trademark Simonson onomatopoeias, such as KABOOM! and Kraboom, and Kriakaboom, and finally Kraboom, and Doctor Strange wakes up at 3 a.m., the witching hour, in his Sanctum Sanctorum bedroom. But the storm isn't the reason for Strange's awakening. No, he dresses himself and realizes that someone or something has entered the Sanctum. He moves swiftly through the manor, carefully searching for the intruder, Sure hope it isn't that guy with Hitler's gun again. That's a reference to another Doctor Strange comic I covered. Go check that out. However, Strange finds nothing out of the ordinary and no presence in his midst. He wonders if he was just mistaken. Perhaps he just dreamt that someone was in the Sanctum. He walks back downstairs and... It's shot by a beam of magical energy! But Strange fires back, and the cloak is revealed to be empty. Strange emerges from a portal before the would-be assassin, but then the assassin dissolves into green smoke. Strange wonders what the hell's going on and says... My spell should have only immobilized him, not destroyed him utterly. Yet, there's no trace of him. As if he never existed. Some deeper magic is at work here. A simple spell of inverse revivification will serve me. Strange watches as the past portal opens itself in the middle of the sanctum, and the assassin reverses back into it. Which is a lot like the Image series 1963, which Dave Gibbons also worked on. That story also features a, uh, uh, well, he's not really an assassin, but just a villainous character reversing through time after attacking one of our main characters. It's a weird coincidence. Anyway, Strange dives after the ghost and drifts through another plane of existence until the assassin unenters the original portal. Strange follows and finds a massive city in a place filled with unknown magic. A low hum echoes through the odd empty buildings as Strange flies around inspecting, gets closer to one of the structures and feels it, realizes that it's warm and soft, almost like skin. Strange puts his ear up to it, listening to the soothing hum, and he relaxes. He feels that he's been accepted for godhood. He begins to be entranced in the city, unable to move, utterly relaxed. But his eyes burst open and he casts out a wave of light. He realizes it's all an illusion and the city itself emerges in its true colors. Ancient and filled with decay and steeped in evil. No more! A shaft of starlight will penetrate the darkness and dispel the gloom. <laughs> Nightmare. You have accepted my invitation at last, Dr. Strange. Then let me extend the hospitality of my ancient realm. I have been waiting for this moment for an eternity. That was a lot of spit. Suddenly, the entire city begins trembling and falling to pieces. Strange casts the shield of Sephirim and reasons that there's no way that this is Nightmare's realm because he was awake. He then casts a spell at Nightmare, and his demonic body explodes into millions of stars within a black void of space. And Dr. Strange shouts, By the eternal Vishanti, 
No! Yes, Doctor Strange. Eternity has called you home at last. Eternity grabs hold of Strange and says that he has grown greatly, but his presence has begun to disrupt the cosmic balance. Strange's power threatens its very existence. Eternity is threatening Doctor Strange, and he says that it's time that Strange becomes one with the universe, but Strange realizes that that is yet another illusion, and he uses magic to quickly dispel it. The humming continues, greater than before, and Strange lands back on the ground. He moves throughout the city, looking for something, anything, until a voice deep within his mind says, Well played, little sorcerer. You have finally begun to sense the essence of the problem, and so quickly. A voice of the mind, but this voice at last is real. Real, real, tiny mortal, in this realm there is nothing real but my will. And then Doctor Strange realizes what's happening and says, By the seven rings, I stand upon my enemy, and he is asleep. That's right, this whole weird city of buildings that don't work is on the back of a giant purple creature that now that I'm looking at it kind of looks like Thanos. <laughs> Doctor Strange realizes he's fucked if this thing fully wakes up, so he starts casting magical attacks. But then the being begins to shift, and Strange topples off. Luckily, his cloak catches him, and Strange hovers before the titanic face of the creature. He strikes with all the power he possesses. And then, the giant eyes open, and an alien green light shines out of them. Strange calls upon the help of the Ancient One as he unleashes one final attack. The creature has fully woken up, and it unleashes beams of pure energy from the Strange Dimension directly into Strange himself. His protection spell holds briefly, but it quickly gives way, and he is destroyed. The creature smiles and returns to sleep for another millennia. The end. Oh, wait, no, there's still more. The humming echoes lowly throughout the realm. Strange emerges from beneath one of the structures on the creature's back, his magical duplicate successfully having fooled the creature and his cloaking spell lasting. He carefully opens a portal and exits the strange dimension and literally boards it up and returns to the Sanctum Sanctorum. By the time Stephen returns, the sun is rising and the clouds disperse. Strange undresses, climbs back into bed, and goes back to sleep. The end. Also, check this out. Look at this classic Dave Gibbons work of repeating panels like this as bookends to the story. How great is that? I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of What Is. Uh, like and subscribe for more content just like this. And as per the usual, let me know what you thought of the story in the comments below. I hope that YouTube never changes where the comments are, or else this video, this scene, is about to get a whole lot outdated. Um, also, as per the huge, I, I enjoyed it. I love this story. It's just, it's a nice, short, concise, one-off story. And it, that's why I love it. It's a one-off little tale that just fucking happens to Doctor Strange in the middle of the night. Like, he goes through just so much weird, magical bullshit <laughs> that he has to just deal with that, like, this will have no repercussions on him any time or at any other point in his life is just going to be like long will ask him how he slept the next day and dr strange will be like eh, all right i guess um and the fact that it's a one-off is nice because you know i would not read a three to five issue story arc about this weird eldritch being <laughs> um yeah it's just it's just a fun story it's lighthearted, I guess, although the creature does imply that it sends out weird nightmare assassins and it kills people or brings them back to its reality so it can kill them itself. Um, what's up with those buildings? It's just a creepy image altogether, that giant purple monster. You don't really see it all in its entirety. Um, and it's from some weird alternate reality or dimension where magic is a lot weirder. That's another thing I like is that this just shows uh, like I don't know, it just shows more aspects of the Marvel uh, like magical ordeal. Like fucking there's weird magic that Doctor Strange doesn't really understand. And uh, 
Luckily, he doesn't have to deal with it because he locked the door and never has to see that creature again. Um, and just the fact that it all takes place over the course of a night. Like I said before, this has no repercussions on Doctor Strange, but the fact that he has to get up, look around, deal with this, and then at the end of, well, not defeating, but escaping this eldritch being that lured him there, he just goes back to bed. <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck, it's not that big of a deal. It's locked up. And just goes to sleep. Like, it adds such humanity to these normally fantastical tales. You know, I've said it before. Uh, Marvel is, has always uh, trumpeted the fact that they are the world outside of your window. And really, they sort of lost that. Um, stories, they become, you know, fucking... Hulk is a spaceship right now. He's a fucking little spaceship man or whatever. I don't know. I don't read that stupid shit. <laughs> I... Uh, fuck, I don't know what else is going on. Tony Stark might still be a hologram. I don't think that's still a thing. Uh, just so much weird stuff, you know, uh, coming from me, someone who loves the Silver Age, I know. So much weird stuff, but they just don't have enough of, like, that heart of that humanity that, you know, they had, I guess. Oh, here I go. Back in the good old days of Marvel Comics, you know, when Stan was adding in his fucking verbose dialogues about how Johnny Storm felt today or Peter Parker's inner emotional turmoils because he's fucking getting hard in class and he got called up to the front or whatever. Um, I just, I want to see more stories like this. Like, even if it's in a, say it's an ongoing series, ongoing Doctor Strange written by whoever the fuck, just have like an issue here and there where they, they just deal with something like this. Show us that these are still real people and not just cool action figure characters that you're picking up and just smashing into whatever dumb fucking elder god that you've created about five different times again and again. Show us that, you know, these, this is a real universe of real two-dimensional characters that we just watch. Um, so that ends my tirade, I guess. I'll stop it there before I go too much longer about my inner feelings of how comic books should work. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, the last one, we're getting closer and closer to that episode 100. And I hope you're ready. All right. I will see you guys next time. Bye.